October is almost done. Boo! <laughs> I know, I know. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is October 30th. It is Monday. Now, I'm going to share some due diligence with you on some hot penny stocks. I day trade penny stocks all through the day, and as I'm doing my research, I'm looking for stocks on any market under five bucks that have potential to make us money. Now, I'm looking for these stocks by studying the charts. That's where I do most of my due diligence. I look for a chart that has heat first, that looks like it's ready to break out or has a lot of volume coming in. When I find a chart that has heat, I'll match that up to a hot piece of news. And let me tell you what, you take a hot chart and a hot piece of news, you got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you each day. And I've got some for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is U.S. Nuclear Corps, ticker U-C-L-E. And if you'll allow me, I'm just going to call it Uncle. It's just easier than anything else I can come up with. Now, her chart right now is blazing. She's already broke out over the 200 and she's surging. So why would I look at it? Isn't this a rocket stock? I don't think so. The company came out with news October 24th, which is when it started running. And it is big news, though at best it's speculative news. There's no hardcore numbers or deals in there, but it is big news. Now, I like this company because they are in the right place at the right time. We're going to get more information about the company as we go along and look at the news. We've got a small description here. U.S. Nuclear Corporation is a holdings company specializing in the development and manufacturing of radiation, chemical, and biological detection instrumentation for health, safety, and border protection. She finished today at 13 and a half cents with... <laughs> You saw that. It changed right before our eyes. We had bigger gains, but we're getting some aftermarket activity. At this current moment, she is at a little over 4% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, which means you're not going to be able to trade this right now. Even though it's trading, it isn't us, not your everyday average investors. It's marketers, brokers. I don't know who else, but it ain't us. So she's on the middle tier of the OTC. The QB, we call this the better tier. Why is it better? Well, compared to the pinks, anything's better. The pinks have no validated information, including financials. That's why they call them disclosures. They're just giving you some no numbers and disclosing them. But there's been no accounting done on them. QBs, you must have a CPA go through your financials and audit them. So we're getting actual factual numbers we can use to weigh the company up. Those are called fundamentals. That is great. It makes the company more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they got those two green ticks I'm always harping to you about. They are important. That's validated information. You're trading a pink, you got nothing else but these green ticks. Anywhere else, they're just reassuring to see there. So I've already told you what this company does. What was their relative volume today? Really? Okay, we're under 100,000 on her average and today, dropping from 94,000 to 82,000. Share structure for Uncle, that's not bad. Our outstanding share count is about 38 million. Insiders, if these numbers are correct, own about 21 million of them, leaving us with just over 17 million in the float, which isn't a bad float at all. Taking a look at those financials. All right, over the last four years, she's had her ups and downs. She's remained in the black, and she's gone from about uh, 1.7 million up to a high of 3.5. At the end of 2022, she was right around 2 million, got to keep around three quarter million. Oh, I know they're millions because there's three zeros up there. Was I confusing you? I'm sorry. Got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts we look at. Quarterly. Again, up and down and all around. She's on a low right now, the lowest. Uh, June's quarter was, hmm, June's. We should have another one out already. This is at 346,000 and they only brought home 34,000. But the news we're gonna look at, that is gonna tip this thing on its head big time. Balance sheet for the company, let's see what they got. In the bank, $95,000. The zeros come here too. Total assets, about 3 million. Total liabilities are 
4.1. So our shareholder equity is negative of 1.7 million. We need to get some revenues coming into this company. And like I said, they're in the right place at the right time because everything's kind of bad. Looking at our disclosures, we've got one 8K here that came out in October and this has to do with some directors and management changes, don't know exactly. And we've got some news. Now there is lots of news here and we're only gonna jump into two pieces, but I want you to see this, you get an idea of what it is they're working with. I have gone all the way back here to July, the very end of July, the company discusses the potential of its PFAS detection technology. I don't know exactly what a PFAS is, but I did look it up. It's a serious poisonous toxin that can kill people that gets in our waters. So I'm glad someone's paying attention. Uh, another one here, the company is considering expanding sensor technology in the vehicular industry. I have not dove into that. I'm not quite sure how their technology can work with it. So that would be interesting. Growing concerns as Japan begins 40 year release of undetectable tritium into the Pacific Ocean. And the next piece of news goes right along with that. Interest surges in US nuclear food monitors as Japanese food bans take effect. And we're gonna take a look at this because it covers these two pieces of information which are real important to us and the company. Then we've got two other pieces of news. The company's introduction of revolutionary desalination desalting water sounds like they can take ocean water and make it good water wouldn't that be nice and rad waste water treatment techniques and then the big news that we're also going to read the company's border security and fentanyl detection systems in demand as white house seeks 13.6 billion dollar in funding so we're going to take a look at this one and that one right there this came out september 19th when Japan started releasing radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean recently, they started that in April. They had a tsunami back in 2011, hit their uh, Fukushima nuclear center, and we had a nuclear meltdown, lots of radiation. And they've been cleaning it up and accumulating all of this water, which is now radiated. And there is lots of it, folks. I mean, I think it's like 400 billion gallons or some enormous number, so long that it's going to take 30 to 40 years to pour it back into the oceans. They tell us here that this has prompted China to announce a ban on all Japanese seafood products due to concerns of contamination. Joining China is Hong Kong, Macau, and South Korea who have banned seafood from around Fukushima. Last year, China was Japan's top trading partner for seafood, accounting for almost $1 billion worth and Hong Kong came in second with almost a half a billion dollars. U.S. nuclear's most popular food contamination monitors measure minute quantities of radioactive contamination in food, including liquids, all liquids, drinking water, seawater, sake, milk, for radioactive contamination down to the lowest levels possible for safety. It is expected that it would take 30 plus years for Japan to release all the stored radioactive water and during that time it will be extremely important to closely monitor all food and products in the area and surrounding countries. Keep in mind folks, all the oceans are connected. It's going to take them 30 years to do this. All the waters at some point in time are all going to be contaminated. This is a serious concern. That other piece of news is big news talking about big money. They say here, in a significant move to bolster border security and combat the ever-increasing threat of fentanyl trafficking, the Biden administration has proposed a budget requesting $13.6 billion. This allocation aims to enhance security measures at all U.S. border crossings and inspection sites is benefiting U.S. Nuclear Corps, who is pioneering the development of drone-mounted, handheld, and stationary border security systems that rapidly detect radiation, biological toxins, and hazardous, hard-to-detect chemicals such as PFAs, drugs, fentanyl, gunpowder, and nerve gases. In drones, you don't even need people. Now, this is what's interesting. 
they have now lifted it up to $13.6 billion. At the beginning of the year, they had budgeted for $4 billion for this, but that request was not fulfilled. <laughs> the administration has now expanded its efforts by seeking a more comprehensive package. And this company believes they meet that criteria. They think they are going to be considered and get a big chunk of this money. And wouldn't that help their revenues? So the whole world has got situations. There's lots of countries that need clean water. There's lots of places in Europe and over there by Japan that want to test their waters. They want to test the seafoods. All of us want to make sure that anything we're consuming is clean. This company is going to be in big demand. And right now, folks, the chart is hot. It's running on speculation that this company is going to get a big chunk of this money. <laughs> Any slice of this probably would be huge and added on to what they're making would be astronomical. And the chart shows a ton of excitement right now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. That is a screaming hot chart right now. This is ticker UCLE, Uncle. We are going to chart Uncle and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. As far as I know, signing up with them, that's still free too. So we're looking at a one-day, one-year chart. We've got a 52-week high back in February of just about 19 cents when she was firmly over the 200, drawing ourselves a resistance up there. And then we've got a 52-week low at the start of October of about 4.5 cents. And as you can see, not only is she bouncing off of that low bubble, she is ripping through the 200, hitting some serious supports and resistances. Coming on down to that six month, four hour view. Six months ago, our high was 17 and a half cents. She has fallen down to that low. And as I said, she bounced off of it, got on top of our 200 day haul, was wrestling to get on top of our 50. And then when that big news came out about the government having $13.5 billion to give to some companies to help them, woo, she ran. She's floating on her nine-day SMA without one red bar on our four-hour chart, crushing the 200, not even turning back. The 20-day SMA is just now crossing the 200. Here comes our 50 and our 200 haul. This is picture-perfect, folks. Osculators are also picture-perfect. Houston would love these. We have a nice launch. Every single one of them are climbing right now. You can't go wrong if all of your osculators are pointing up. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Looks a lot like the last one. Here our low is four and a half cents roughly under the 200. She's just beating her head up against that 200, not getting anywhere until the news came out right here. That little itty bitty day, there was hardly any trading. We had a bounce on that day and from there she has taken off. On our one hour chart, she is floating on that nine day SMA and look at the size of some of these jumps. That bar right there goes from nine cents up to virtually 15 cents. You're looking at a 50% jump right there. And that is getting up to that strong resistance that I drew from the past. Our osculators. They're not looking bad. There is a little bit of cooling off. You can see she's primarily gone sideways today. Not a whole lot of growing. And that shows, but you can see there's a little bit of uphill here. Well, not on our MACD. She is pulling back as well as our RSI. But that's at 66. Everything still looks strong. Look at those SMAs. Aren't they pretty? Five day, five minute. So we got a low here of 4.8 cents. She's slowly climbing on her low bubble, but this is a nice steady climb, showing a lot of initiative here. It ran, hitting that resistance, which is at 14.8 uh, cents, came back down, did not touch the 20, hanging on to the nine. Finally, we've hit the 20 and she has now landed on it and resting. Our osculators say she is pushing down a little bit. She could drop down to the 50, but with everything that's happening, even if she dips, I expect her to come back. The news is hot. That is great. She could get a chunk of that pie, and that would be amazing, especially on the short term. But on the long term as well, folks, can you see a company like this not being needed? Right? And this is global. 
So I think at some point this company's going to explode, but that's just my personal opinion. Right now, you can see she's got a hot chart. She is ripping. She just had big news, but we don't have any deadlines. We don't know when and if we're going to hear anything more about this. So watch the charts. If the volume comes in, you can see we had lots of volume the other day, but today not very much volume and she's going sideways. So keep your eye on her. But UCLE, she is definitely one to watch. Our next hot penny stock is quite interesting. This is ticker SRHYY, Syra Resources. Now, it was a chart that caught my attention. It's an atypical breakout chart. She's setting up for a breakout looking good. It's the kind I look for all the time. Her news, she really hasn't got a catalyst of her own, but she definitely has a catalyst. There's a lot going on in the world right now with regard to EV battery metals. This company deals with graphite. And China has just come out with news saying they're not sending any more graphite to anybody who's not aligned with China. So that excludes a lot of the world. So now people are scampering to get graphite. And graphite companies are running. This one included. Now there's something I want to share with you before we look any further. This is an ADR. That is an American Deposit Receipt. Now, without getting too deep, the benefit of an ADR is making it legal and easy for foreign companies to get their stocks onto an American market. And this is an Australian company. Well, the ADR represents shares, shares of the company. And it's a ratio. This ratio is simple, one to one. One ADR equals one share. So whatever the share price is, that's basically what the ADR is. Now, there's no hard standing rule that says one can go higher than the other. Sure, they run independently, but normally they're equal and equivalent. Now, this ratio could be one to five. So if the stock, the ordinary shares were 10 cents a piece, this ADR would be 50 cents. So we're looking at a ADR that's on a one to one ratio with its ordinary stock. This is its ordinary stock right here, S-Y-A-A-F. See here, ordinary shares. What I want you to pay attention to here is the price and the gains. The price is 46 cents. She had 2.7% gains. Over here, we are at 52 cents with 17.6% gains. They are the same. This ADR represents the stock on a one-to-one -one ratio. There is no difference between the two. You can trade either one of them. Get in, get out whenever you want. One day, the stock may be running hard. Another day, the ADR running hard. Some days they run together. Right now, the ADR is running. But definitely, keep an eye on the other one as well. So they tell us here that CIRA is an Australian securities exchange listed industrial minerals and technology company with its flagship Balama Graphite operation in Mozambique and a downstream active anode material facility in the United States. She is on the pink tier here, and I don't see any green marks here. No validated transfer agent, no verified profile. So you got to wonder about that. So what can I tell you about this company? Well, we're going to start with the relative volume and work our way into the juicy stuff. Relative volume grew today on the ADR. She jumped from 2.8 thousand shares. Talk about under the radar, right? To 3.5 thousand shares. That's nothing. And she did do 17.6% gains today. Now, don't get confused. These are not warrants. These are just shares of stock. We just call them ADRs. Don't worry about it. There really is no difference in that regard. What is the share structure for this company? 496 million shares outstanding for the ADRs. No clue what the float is could be as high as a half a billion roughly, or it could be considerably less, which is what we're really hoping for here. Financials for the company. Well, here and on the stock, I could not find any information, so I jumped over here to Yahoo. Yahoo Finance gives us the financials for the company. Back in 2019, they were doing 72 million. Then came COVID and boy, did they fall down to 10.7 million, huge drop. Since then, they have been coming back growing. We were at 29 million in 2021 and 106 million at the end of 2022. Now, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think TTM means 
total to month. I think that's what it means, which means from the beginning of the year till now, or is it quarterly? I don't know. I think it's yearly. We would be at 69.8 million. So the revenues are growing. They're getting better. They're looking good. Uh, let's take a look at those disclosures. We have new disclosures over here. So let's just jump right on into that news. They don't have a lot of news. The only piece of news we got here actually isn't even theirs, but it relates to them. China to restrict exports of key EV battery material, graphite. And this has been about a week and a half now that this news has been coming out. But in relation to this, I do have two articles I found online that can give us some more information. Tesla supplier Sierra expects more graphite buys ahead of China export ban. Australian producer Sierra Resources on Thursday said it expects buyers outside of China to set up their purchases of natural graphite before stricter export controls on the battery material comes into effect on December 1st. We're talking one month away, folks. Watch graphite companies. China the world's largest graphite producer and exporter will require export permits as of December 1 for some graphite products, including spherical graphite used by electric vehicle makers. And like I said, if you're not part of the China organization, you know, if you're not aligned with them, you're not getting one of these permits. Sira, which has a supply deal with Tesla, so she's got steady business just with that operation. You know Tesla's not going anywhere. Mines graphite at its Balama operations in Mozambique and is building a plant in Louisiana where it will produce active annoyed materials for batteries. The export controls could mean that automakers and suppliers of battery materials will have to accelerate their search for alternative source materials this next month, the next 30 days. Sarah said that based on the feedback from its customers and analysts, buyers are looking to stockpile graphite to reduce the risk of near-term supply disruptions ahead of the ban and ahead of China's winter when it tends to produce less natural graphite. Any disruption or reduction in China supply without replacement supply would impact battery production outside of China seriously. And the other piece of news, this isn't serious hard news like the last one is, but it's important. It's good to see the company is moving forward. This came out October 13th. Sierra Resources achieves full operation of solar and battery hybrid system in Mozambique. Sierra Resources, a graphite mining company, has achieved complete operation of its solar and battery hybrid system at its Balama operations in Mozambique. The solar and battery setup is expected to meet at least 35% of Balama's average power needs, resulting in significant reductions in diesel consumption and associated cost savings. During operational testing over 10 days, the integrated system supplied 33% of the total power demand, saving about 16,000 liters of diesel per day and achieving an average of 34% reduction in diesel consumption. So they're getting greener, and they're saving money. We see that they've got customers like Tesla, and I was looking around to see if I could find information about what this company has, and I couldn't see any other customers everywhere I looked, but I'm sure they must have more customers. And if they don't, <laughs> they're going to soon. They're definitely going to. We've got 30 days before the ban starts from China on graphite, and the whole world needs graphite. That's what's got this chart ready to rip, and other graphite companies as well. So let's go take a look at this chart. We've jumped on into the chart for SRHYY Sierra Resources. This is a one year, one day chart. Our 52 week high hit in January of two bucks. Long drawn out fall the whole year until it hit a low of about 24 and a half cents mid October. Off of that low, she has bounced. She's gotten up over top of the 50 and she is floating on her nine day SMA on the one year chart, which looks superb. Six month, four hour view. Our new high on the six month chart is $1.38. And I've drawn up some resistances here, the obvious ones. We've got the one just before the big fall. That was at 98.99 cents. And right now we're at roughly 53 cents. 
We've got one here dead center of this big fall. Find the top, find the bottom, find the center. That will be a strong resistance and it is currently 82 cents. And then obviously we got one right here where lots of heads and bottoms were banging on this line. And that is currently over the 200 day SMA and is roughly 65, 66 cents. So she has been running downhill all this time, bouncing off of that low bubble, off of the 200 hole, getting up over top of the 50 and still pushing on her nine day SMA, running for that 200 day SMA. Volume is nothing real special right now, but the oscillators look really, really good. Our PPO, the percentage price oscillator, is climbing up nicely, just like our MACD, and our RSI is at 61. But what I see here is my ADX is falling while my, my PPO is climbing. Whenever you see those two separating, it is a pattern, which means your price is climbing 100%, no ifs, ands, or buts. So right now, the oscillators look luscious. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, there's our 50-day SMA in the center. She was falling, leveled off right here, right where all the activity took place, and now she is starting to climb. We just had a 200-day SMA come into the picture. I normally see the price go to the new SMA wherever it is. I'm glad it was above the price. So she jumped as soon as this came into the picture, Whoop! She moved from the 50 to the 200, more data up there, and now she's working to get on top of the 200 and start running. The oscillators look good. Look at that PPO. She's pushing up firm like all the rest. Every single oscillator is pushing up. And what do I say about that? You can't go wrong if all the oscillators are pushing up. Five day, five minute. As you can see, we don't have a lot of bars. She hasn't been getting a lot of trading here. But the trades have been big, five-minute bounces. We're going from 38 cents up to 53 cents. Oh, that's over 50%. Uh, that could be 60, 75% gains. Fell back down, fell, jumped back up. Look, there are some nice bounces here, folks. And she is climbing. Here's our 20-day SMA. It's the new SMA that just came into the picture. And she is all pushing up right now. Oscillators. They're strong. I'm not saying super strong, but they're not weak. All of them are pushing up, every single one. We got a crossover on our MACD right now. RSI is pushing up. Honestly, folks, it looks good to me for a run. But keep your eye on its sister. What was it? S-Y-A-A-F, the ordinary share. It could swing. It could go from one to the other. I'm just letting you know. So right now we're watching SRHYY. Put it on your watch list. I'll wait. Wow, that was quick. Our next top penny stock comes from the major exchange, the NASDAQ. This is Safety Shot, ticker SHOT. Now the chart, it's nothing special to talk about. It is in breakout mode, but she's kind of been going sideways. However, she had a huge jump not too long ago on some hot news. It was back in July, the company acquired some intellectual property for a product called Safety Shot. It is a rapid alcohol detoxification drink for people. If you're too drunk, you drink this, and in 30 minutes, it lowers your blood alcohol content. Well, they like this product so much that they literally changed their name and their ticker to this product. But it's not the only product that they've got, and I'll share that with you here in a minute. Now, the company just had big news about the launch of this product. And everybody is excited about it. And I think the stock is going to run again. So shot finished today at $1.27 with just over 8.5% gains. She is on the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade it for free. No transaction fees with the major exchange stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, aftermarket. That's not allowed with the OTC. Not for me and you. So let's get some information about this company. We're going to start off with the little description, and then I want to jump into a filing and give you some more. Safety Shot, a wellness and functional beverage company, is set to launch Safety Shot, the first patented beverage on earth that helps people feel better faster by reducing blood alcohol content and boosting clarity. The company plans to spin off legacy assets from its Jupiter Wellness business to unlock value for its shareholders. They've got other assets. 
this company wants to focus in just on this beverage and rather than spin it out they're going to take everything else they have and spin them out and if you own this company you're going to get dividends so exactly what are the assets that they're going to be spinning out well they got four of them here photocell no stings jw 700 and jw 500. real briefly photocell was launched commercially in india q3 2022 as a treatment for vitiligo and psoriasis. Photocell is a topical cream that works with natural sunlight to provide patients with safe and effective phototherapy. No Stings provides an effective barrier against the stinging mechanism of jellyfish, preventing the delivery of venom to the victim. So this isn't something you put on after you've been stung. This is something you put on to prevent you from even getting stung. God, do I like that. I have been stung a lot. And to be totally honest, I'm tired of asking my friends to be on me. Yes, I'm being serious. JW700 is currently being licensed abroad and developed for the U.S. launch. The product has been clinically shown to increase the enzymes needed for minoxidil to work. We're talking about Rogaine, growing your hair. You use this product with Rogaine, your hair grows even better. And the last product. JW500 was born out of clinical trials to establish a topical treatment for the restoration of nipple sensitivity for breast augmentation patients, in addition to patients who had undergone chemotherapy or lump echnotomy surgery following a cancer diagnosis. Now they give us a little more information up here. We generate our revenue through various channels, including the sales of our over-the-counter and consumer products, as well as licensing royalties. Our products are available through various retailers and e-commerce platforms. Additionally, we collaborate with other companies to license out our intellectual property, creating additional revenue streams and expanding our global presence. Currently, we have signed some agreements to license JW700 to Taisho, a $2.6 billion revenue company and Japan's leading seller of Medoxidil products, Rogaine. Taisho plans on launching the product commercially in 2024 in India. Folks, do you realize, I do believe I'm correct here, that India is now the largest populated country in the world, larger than China. After this COVID situation, it seems that is the case. The company has also signed an agreement with Cosmofix Technovation and Sampo Greeno Cosmetics. So let's go see what the relative volume is in this company. Well, hot darn, we got some volume coming in. It's nice to see that, especially in today's market. Our volume just continues to drop, folks. So if it seems real thin to you, it is. So she jumped from under a half a million shares over the last 30 days to almost 3 million shares today. That's like six times her normal volume. Share structure for shot. Well, all they tell us is the outstanding share count, which isn't bad. That's at 27.4 million. Our float could be that high. Chances are it's lower. Hopefully a lot lower. Market cap for shot, 32.1 million. Is shot making any money? Yes, they are, even before they launched this product. Back in 2019, they weren't making much, only $6,000. 2020, they kicked it up over a million. Then they kicked it up in 2021 to almost 3 million, and now they're over 6 million. And again, I say, before they even launched this primary product that they're so focused on. And they were pulling in profits all that time, well, most of all that time. And right now, they're over a million dollars in profit. Quarterly? Well, a year ago, they were doing pretty good, $3 million. They dropped and we're coming back up. And currently at the last financial in June, we were at 2.3 million. They got to keep a half a million. Quick look at that balance sheet. They got money in the bank. They got $2.7 million, 4.5 million in short-term investments. Add up all their assets, they got 11 million. Liabilities are less than half that at 5.4 million. So this little company actually has positive shareholder equity of 4.4 million. I like it. Disclosures for the company. Well, we've got a couple of 8Ks over here. These two relate to the news. This is a new investor that just came into the company. They bought just about 10% of the company. And I can't remember what this one was about. You can't remember at all, can you? 
Oh yeah, they got a new brand ambassador here. Uh, this is Superstar George Gamebred, Mastville. He is a uh, martial arts uh, cage fighter, so he's one of their new ambassadors. So let's take a look at that news now because that's what these filings correlate to. So I have gone back here to September 14th. Jupiter Wellness changes its name to Safety Shot and Ticker to Shot in alignment with their new business focus. Safety Shot to develop detox product for alcohol posing. Plans to file an IND with the US FDA. Really, this is a new drug introduction. They're going to introduce this as a drug to the FDA? Uh-uh, don't do that. If they do that, they're not going to be able to sell it on the open market. You're not just going to be able to go into the cooler and be able to buy it. You're going to have to go to your pharmacist to buy it. Please, folks, don't do that. Uh, let's see. We got another piece of news here in October. Safety Shot expects clinical data for their hair loss treatment in Q4. Their uh, JW700, is it, that works with Rogaine. On October 25th, the second U.S. patent is issued for Safety Shot's JW700, which boosts the effectiveness of minoxidil, Rogaine, which is currently a $1.5 billion hair growth market. And then the big news that just came out here today, Safety Shot's highly anticipated wellness beverage that reduces blood alcohol content set the launch first week of December 2023 at drinksafetyshot.com and Amazon. Now, folks, Amazon is huge. You know darn well this is the biggest online retailer out there. So if you can get your products on there and people know about them, they're going to be sold out. Watch, watch, they're going to be sold out. And that's why I think it's going to run. They're getting the product out there in a month. This is another company you've got a month to get in while it's cheap before it takes off. And before they do their spin out and they give away those free dividends. There is lots going on with this company. Let's go take a look at the chart. We're now taking a look at Safety Shot, ticker SHOT. This is a six month, four hour view. We got our low back here in June of 31 cents and a really nice high in September of $3.90. This is September 14th, coincidentally the same day that the news came out that they acquired the IP for Safety Shot. Coincidentally. This thing jumped from $1.20 all the way up to $3.90 you are looking at over 350% gains there. And from the low bubble to the high bubble, you're looking at almost 1,300% gains. Now off of this low bubble, she did change her trend. It's not a downtrend anymore. It is definitely an uptrend. She was riding her 50-day SMA all the way up to this $1.28, which became a very strong resistance. She was stuck there for virtually a month before she had this rip. Then she came back down, and that is right where she is at right now. Now, she hasn't got any direction. She's going up. She's going down. She's just kind of hanging around this 200-day SMA. But now that we've got Catalyst, I think she's going to find a direction. We had a lot of volume come in today. Our oscillators are all starting to push up. We've got a crossover on our PPO. Our MACD is crossing the signal line. And our RSI has come up from 40, hitting 63, but it's pulled back to 55. Take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Pretty much sideways, right? She came down to a low bubble, hit a high bubble, and then centered off right there in the center. Dropped a little. We had a nice rip today from $1.18 up to $1.48. And she's fallen back, but she has landed firmly on that 200-day SMA. She is currently just, just under the 9-day SMA. You can't climb till you're on top of the 9. And she looks like she's setting up. All of our SMAs look nice here. Oscillators are a bit weak. Not much, but they are pushing down just a little bit. Except our RSI, it's actually climbing. Five day, five minute. So we were at here, $1.48 here, had a big drop, came underneath the 200, fell to a low here of $1.10, and she has pushed herself up to that 200, took a whole day negotiating with it, but when did it go flat? It was falling here went flat right here, and now she's pushing up. This was a beautiful day. 
everything turned on that day. And the start of today, she was at a buck 18 pre market, took off. Looks like she came on the market at about a buck 29, jumped again to a buck 40, fell back, then started climbing and went to a buck 48. When did she hit that? She hit that at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. So we had a nice long run. Now she is falling all the way back to her 200. She's negotiating with it, but she's respecting it. So it doesn't look like she's going to go under this. I like it. I think this is a good buying opportunity right now. I think the company knows what they've got. A lot of people drink. A lot of people don't want to be drunk or as drunk as they are. I think it's going to be a hot product. Why would they get rid of all their other assets and only have one product in this company if they didn't believe in it? I think shot is going to be hot. But do some more due diligence, folks. I'm sure there's more to know about the company. There's more to know about the other companies as well. And since it is your money that you're investing, it wouldn't hurt you to do some more due diligence. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.